In 1982, I sat in this pew right here and I listened as the pastor spoke about the saving grace of Jesus. I was only a teenager at the time, but I knew that I needed to give my life to Jesus. So as the pastor began to give the altar call, I went down to the front and made Jesus my Lord and Savior, just as many of you have. But at that point in my life, all I knew was the salvation message. A few days later that weekend, me and some friends went out hauling hay. Yeah, I know, I'm a country boy, enough with all the jokes. But at that point in the weekend, a friend pulled out a fifth of whiskey and some of the guys started drinking it. And no one had told me that that was wrong, but I felt in my heart that I wasn't supposed to participate in the drinking. But when I told them that we shouldn't do that, one of the friends just smiled and said, you know, Riley, you can get saved next Sunday. You can go down front again. I know that sounds terrible, but I didn't know any better. No one had discipled me. No one had told me about my new life or what it was all about. But over the next several years, I fell back into sin. I went to the Baptist church, I went to the Methodist church, the Assembly of God church, but no one took the time to disciple me or to show me what's next after my salvation. I probably went forward to receive salvation dozens of times, but it wasn't until 1993 I attended a Word of Faith church and the pastor began to define my responsibility in my new relationship with Christ. There's nothing wrong with those other churches. It was the fact that I didn't take my commitment seriously enough to pursue what the Lord had for me beyond salvation. You see, so many people think that once you're saved, you're forced into this super strict, legalistic lifestyle so that God will continue to love you. The truth is that all God wants from you is a personal relationship. Just like any relationship, your success and intimacy depends on how much time you focus and put into the other person. There are many ways that we can spend time with the Lord that will not only strengthen our relationship, but strengthen us in our new walk with Christ. The first form of communication is prayer. Prayer isn't some fancy poem you memorize in the King James and recite it to God. Prayer is simply conversation with God. The more conversation you have with a friend, the closer you become. Go to God with your desires, your problems, your questions. Anything that is important to you is important to God. The more you begin to pray and focus on the Lord, the stronger your relationship will be with Him. I know that as a new believer, I've had so many questions about this new life I was given. The Lord blesses us by answering these questions in the Bible. It's so important that you begin to read your Bible. The Bible is like a handbook, and it has all the information that you will need to live a successful, victorious Christian life. Now I know the Bible can be confusing at times, especially to a new believer. This is why it's important to find a good church. Don't get me wrong, you don't have to attend a church to be a Christian. Attending church will not save you, but church is a place where you can get together with fellow believers and collectively share the knowledge that you've all learned. You can ask questions that you might have and learn more together about the Lord and all He has for their lives. When I first got saved, I was rarely around other believers who loved the Lord, and it was so hard for me to change my lifestyle because everyone around me wasn't living for the Lord. I didn't understand what I was now that Christ lived in me. I didn't know the authority I had over sin and the devil, and I didn't fully understand what the grace of God had set me free from. If you don't take time to create a personal relationship with Jesus after salvation, then you will likely not see a change in your life. When I began to read about what the Lord had done for me, and when I began to pray and seek Him, I finally realized His great love for me, and it was a true, love. It was a love that was born in me for Him that was so real that I didn't want my life to be the same. 
I didn't want to do the same things that I'd been doing. I wanted to obey the Lord and I wanted to live holy to show my appreciation for all He's done for me. The God of the universe gave His very life for me. The least I can do is live my life for Him. And you know what the craziest part of this whole thing was? All the stuff that I thought was important in my life, all of the things that I thought I would miss, none of them mattered at all. In fact, my life is way better without all those things. I was truly happy and far more fulfilled than I have ever was living my life for myself and for my selfish desires.